Out of the hundreds of people that I've seen try to learn Japanese, only a few have made it to decent fluency. Even living in Japan, I found that 99.9% .9 of people that try learning Japanese just end up failing. And I was almost one of them. It turns out, however, that it's not the fault of the people, but the fault of the common mindset that goes into learning this language. So in this video, I want to show you the many things that can cause people to stop learning Japanese. Because believe it or not, I know enough Japanese to live in Japan. And my learning methods do not require you to live in Japan. And after watching this video, I hope I can save at least some of you from studying this language yet making no progress doing so. And after watching this video, you can be a part of the 1% that knows how to learn Japanese. One of the most common mistakes I see when people take on Japanese is that they refer to it as learning. They refer to learning and studying Japanese the same way they would a subject in school. That's because that's what's been ingrained in our heads by the school system that we spend 12 plus years in. And not only is the system outdated, but it doesn't work for language learning at all. The way school works is that you're presented a concept and you're forced to drill it in your head manually. They teach languages the same way they would teach the quadratic formula. I mean, sure, you can memorize the quadratic formula and what it does, but it's only going to be a surface level concept in your brain. And if I had to guess, none of you watching understand its intricacies and nuances, like how exactly does it manipulate numbers? But you pass your math test and that does enough to trick your brain into thinking that you understand it. Your reward circus goes off in your brain when you pass a test, so it's like you don't know that you didn't learn it, but you think you did. And if you approach languages the same way, you'll be left with the same result. You won't know anything. You may be able to memorize the translations of the words, and when you take a test in class, you get a good result by doing so. But you don't end up getting very good at the language, just the language class, if that makes sense. As long as you take these language classes, you sort of begin to just turn into a parrot. You can recite the limited dialogue that you've been exposed to in the classrooms, and you can get very good at the language class, but the second the bell rings and you're in a situation that wasn't in your homework, you're cooked. And let's not pretend this homework is gonna teach you anything useful. I remember some assignments that I did in Spanish class, and honestly, it felt like they found the most efficient ways for you to do language homework without learning any of the language at all. Like, why am I playing a fill-in-the-blanks game where I had to find the perfect verb conjugation with a work bank on the top of the page? And then on the next page, I'm like drawing lines between English and Spanish words. And then if I don't play the game correctly, my GPA drops. Like what? I can't imagine how bad Japanese classes are, but if it's anything like my Spanish class, they probably spend more time discussing how to learn the language in English than they spend actually like learning the language. Like, read the sentence and tell me it was using the informal past provisional conditional causative form, or was it using the formal present progressive imperative volitional hyper ultra premium deluxe 5000 form, which one was it? And why are most of the people that teach you how to learn a language people that have never learned that language before? English speakers can teach in Japan without having to even learn Japanese, and it's not even like they know how to learn English. The only people that should be teaching these classes are people who have used the methods that they're teaching. And why does the official English test for Japanese learners look like this? Like, what business do these people have learning words like endemic, bastion, and enticement? All they need to know is double cheeseburger with extra fries if they want to understand American. They're doing way too much. Anyway, my point is, a classroom is not an effective space if you want to learn a language. This isn't a hot take by any means, like any linguistic expert will agree. But if everybody knew that, then colleges wouldn't be able to charge you like $20,000. So it's not quite public knowledge. And if you ask like any language teacher the best way to learn a language, they'll tell you to do stuff outside of class. Like, why am I even here then? I guess it's just because the goal of the education system isn't to actually teach you and allow you to prosper in knowledge, but rather just to shape people into a routine that would make them efficient workers. Sadly, languages are shoved into the system, and as a result, we refer to it as learning languages. And I've made that mistake in this video like a million times already, but that brings me to my next point. Most people have the completely wrong mindset. One of the biggest mistakes I see when people start their Japanese journey is they refer to it as a learning process, which is proven to be the wrong way to look at it. Experts like Steven Krashen agree with that point alongside the fact that traditional classroom environments are really bad. The best way to look at it is not as learning Japanese, but rather acquiring it. This is not a school subject. This isn't math or history. It's a language. Language acquisition is something that's very unique to our species. It's what allowed us to get to where we are today. The ability to communicate is what allows humans to be at the top of the food chain. It's how our ancestors taught what mushrooms will poison us or not, or how we coordinated large attacks on animals that would have destroyed us solo. Language is something very deeply rooted in our brains. It works different than how we learn facts or learn how to do a certain technique. Language acquisition is such a unique process that neuroscientists literally distinguish a part of the brain it takes place in as its own areas. You have the Broca's area for speech, and you have the Wernicke's area for language development and comprehension. It's only when we learn how to manipulate these areas to make the most neural connections that we can start effectively learning. And once you get the ball rolling, your chance of failing will decrease dramatically. The reason most people fail is because they take the same approach to Japanese as they would learning a sport. This of course is the fault of school shoving it all under the same branch, but as a result, people are taking the completely wrong approach to learning Japanese. They see it as something where they have to study, sitting down and following a routine where they have to memorize stuff from a textbook. I know this because I was a victim myself. I shoved my head in the textbook trying to memorize grammar rules the same way I would like economics, but it's a completely different process. I mean, it's as simple as answering like, how many times was a textbook shoved in your face 
when you learn your mother language. And the reason that we need to start referring to it as a language acquisition is because it's something that you pick up with exposure. It doesn't have to be some active process of sitting down and trying for hours to understand a language. In reality, there's actually no need to try at all. I mean, think about it. When you learned your mother language, were you trying to learn it or did it just sort of happen? Something that's unique about language learning is it's something that you can sort of pick up passively. It doesn't have to be an active process. Meanwhile, with like stuff like math, you do have to actively try to learn. If you want to learn the language, you can do so just by listening and watching media. But if you want to learn quicker, that's when you start using active learning. Just listening and seeing the associations between sound and visual simulation is enough to get you fluent in a language. I'd be lying to you if I said that it's not effective ways to actively study, but I will tell you that school and doing homework is not one of them. Japanese acquisition is unique in the sense that it has some of the most resources of any language in the world. And I know I'm about to lose like a bunch of chances to sponsors by saying this, but here it goes. You don't need to pay a dime to learn Japanese. With the exception of about five resources, which utilize a system that I'll talk about later, most of them are just out to get your money. But the reality is most of these apps and courses are just as good, if not just learning for free and not spending any money. But with Japanese also comes this little known thing called anime, which is one of the best ways to learn the language. People love to remind you that anime Japanese isn't the same as real Japanese. And I mean, to some extent, no, it's not. But it's like saying SpongeBob English isn't the same as normal English. like. They're the same language. I mean, book Japanese isn't the same as spoken Japanese, but does that mean it's a bad idea to ever read a book again? I see so many people refuse to watch anime when they're learning Japanese. It's like, why? It's not like after watching one episode of JoJo's, you're gonna never be able to talk the same again. Like, you're not gonna go up to Japanese people and be like, Teme, yari yari daze. You know, you'll, you'll be normal, I hope. And the funny thing is, that mindset is exactly why they fail. In my opinion, any resource in a different language is a good resource. Even if it's like propaganda or misinformation, I could definitely make the argument that watching anime is a much better use of your time than doing your typical Japanese homework. Like, how are you going to talk about how anime uses like unnatural Japanese when your worksheet is like... Like, these people will sit and argue that anime Japanese is unnatural, and then they open like their Genki textbook, and they do a worksheet that's like, John-san is talking to Tanaka-san while eating sushi at the shrine, and wants to compliment his katana. Anyway, I'm kind of just yapping now. My entire point is if you want to be better than 99.9% .9 of speakers, don't limit your resources. I mean, yeah, anime Japanese is unnatural to some extent, but like, it's still Japanese. If you have some deep love for doing worksheets in a textbook, then go do some worksheets. But if they give you a headache and you see it as a genuine waste of time, then go do something else. The only bad way to learn a language is to get burnt out and not learn it at all. And truth be told, that happened to me recently. I'm the type of person that wants to get things done in the fastest and most effective way possible. Because I want to use my time well. Just a few weeks ago, I was at a point where I was listening to Japanese in my headphones 16 hours a day. All the meanwhile, doing hundreds of flashcards a day. As you can imagine, that takes a bit of discipline with a generous sample of self-hatred. But I enjoyed doing it knowing I I was making the fastest progress I could. But eventually I had to stop because I just got so burnt out. And stopping is the worst thing you can do as a Japanese learner. At this point, I'd been doing flashcards for about a year straight, but eventually I just didn't like it anymore. I went a long time without any effort to improve my Japanese, and as a result, I got way worse. All of my devices default to the Japanese for every website. I have my YouTube page in Japanese, so I can only see that content. But I figured out in situations like these, the only thing you can do is just enjoy the progress that you've made. I mean, once you begin to realize just how much progress you've made, eventually the burnout will go away and you'll want to start up again. That's what happened to me recently, and to be honest, I'm kind of yearning for the grind. I'm beginning to miss the discipline that learning a language every day gave me, and I kind of miss the routine. I mean, maybe I should get diagnosed, I might be like a masochist or something. But my point is, it doesn't matter what you do. The only bad thing you can do when trying to learn Japanese is not be exposed to Japanese. And out of every mistake on this list, that's the one that causes the most people to stop learning. It's just not being around it enough. And I know it's easy for me to say because I live in Japan and I'm always surrounded by Japanese, but it's possible anywhere else too. But the thing that most people don't get is improving your language skills doesn't mean that you have to start grinding at it. Getting better at Japanese doesn't mean forcing yourself to sit down and study. It can be as simple as just watching a show that you want to watch. All you have to do is take the things that you enjoy doing in English and then just do it in Japanese. And don't get me wrong, you're probably going to suck at this language for a very long time. And if you're okay with knowing that you're going to suck at this language for years, but you can have fun anyway, then Congratulations, you're honestly in the top 1%. And in the process, there's a good chance you realize that learning this language may not be for you. It's really tedious and it takes a lot more work than a lot are willing to put in. But if you really want to learn this language, then it does not have to be a gruesome process. And it doesn't help that some of the most commonly utilized resources are like utter garbage. They're just trying to keep you paying one way or the other. And don't get me wrong, there's some really good paid resources out there, but those are usually ones with something called an SRS system. If you ever heard of Anki, you know what I'm talking about. They take these flashcards of a word with its English definition, and if you get it right, the time 
time until seeing the flashcard again increases. And as the interval gets larger and larger, you'll eventually begin to understand the word. However, when you get the word wrong, the flashcard interval will reset and you'll begin to see the word more often. This is what I used to learn roughly 7,000 words and I just did so by making the flashcards kind of fun. Eventually I enjoyed it, but at some point I kind of started to hate it. So that's when I stopped. And for me, it was honestly only effective as long as I enjoyed it. The second I stopped to enjoy the paid resource, the less valuable it became. There's infinite ways to acquire a language. Some take longer than others, some are more fun than others, and some are more expensive than others. It's just once you reach a point of no longer wanting to do it, that's when you're most likely to fail. And a lot of people go to these language classes thinking it's just going to be some conveyor belt to efficiency, and sadly that's just not true. People fail so much in these classes because it's inherently discouraging. If you don't get a perfect score on all your homework and the tests, your brain tells you that you did something bad and you get hit with sad emotions. If you're not as good as the person next to you, then you feel like you're doing something wrong. And it sucks that this is a default way that people want to learn Japanese. And for those who are trying to learn without class, you kind of just get led astray. So personally, what I would do is just find a way that works for you and then just keep doing it until you want to do something else. The best thing you can do is just keep yourself engaged with the language for as long as possible and just do that by any means necessary. So my point is, if you hate doing flashcards, just go learn some other way. If you want someone to teach you, have them teach you. If you like textbooks, just pick up a textbook. Because the truth is, no matter what you do, it's going to take an excruciatingly long time. It's just a matter of being able to keep your head in the game for as long as you can. Because at the end of the day, as long as you're getting input and understanding it, then you really can't go wrong. You're going to learn the language eventually. Trust your brain to do so. It did it with your first language, and it can do it again with Japanese. Because at the end of the day, it's sort of just like running a marathon. It doesn't matter how good your shoes are, how aerodynamic your body is. It doesn't matter what your breathing technique is. You can still finish a marathon. If you need to walk for a bit, just walk. If you need to stop and take a breather, then stop and take a breather. But no matter what you do, don't leave the track. You may not be able to see the finish line, but you just have to stay on the track anyway. It may not come for a while, so figure out how to keep yourself entertained until it does.